This now is the Mercury program. In order to show that the Mercury program was possible, it was necessary to uh, uh, first show that the accelerations expected could be tolerated, and this was done by the Navy Civil Service staff, uh, particularly Carter Collins, who, who rode the contour couch in the supine uh, position uh, reaching a, a 25G that might have occurred in one of the uh, Mercury emergency situations. This, of course, is Wally Schirra getting into the Mercury capsule. Uh, the full instrumentation was there so that we could practice, train the astronaut and, and let him practice uh, doing the various uh, responses and, uh, and emergency maneuvers. Another uh, of the, of the uh, human experiences that had not occurred prior uh, to this program was the uh, simulation of the um, low altitude abort of the escape tower. If it was necessary to escape from the rocket in an explos explosive situation, when the rocket, uh, launch rocket was still at low altitude, the uh, tower would pull the um, capsule away from the launch rocket at about 11 G, and then, uh, due to air drag, the uh, capsule would decelerate at 11 G minus G sub X. And so this rapid reversal from plus 11 to minus 11 G X uh, had never been tested before. And we did test it. Clark uh, rode that uh, with some tremors. You saw there the contour couches. This is Alan Shepard. Uh, and Bill Douglas, the astronaut physician. Um, you saw with the couches, the uh, uh, both uh, John Glenn and uh, Gordon Cooper. I'm going to go on beyond this to say that the contour couches having to be changed from every astronaut for every astronaut uh, was an irritation. And uh, when uh, Carl Clark left the Naval Air Development Center to become head of life sciences of the Martin Company, um, he invented the concept of an airbag restraint system. This would be a, an inflated system, both above and below the subject, that uh, would have the universal fit capability, uh, but allow the controlled deformation uh, so that the body did not have local distortion. Again, it's not the load, it's the distortion produced by the load that is the main danger in acceleration. Um, this program was done as a small Martin study with the initial ambition that uh, airbags would be used in, in the Apollo program. Um, however, um, Apollo was more cautious than that, although indeed uh, the restraint in the lunar lander was not a particularly uh, you, uh, good restraint because of its uh, single support design. Notice, however, that airbags in the space flight are particularly desirable because uh, you need a high G restraint only for launch and landing, and after the launch and, and landing, the restraint can be deflated out of the way. If you remember, Gemini had a, a chuff problem. It had an 11 G oscillation in its initial designs, and we also showed that the uh, airbag restraint could very easily take out that vibration. One could stay still while the capsule was vibrating around one. Um, at that point, uh, NASA gave us the uh, first contract on airbag restraints by the government. Uh, and we made a uh, larger uh, vehicle simulating a space capsule that had two and a half feet of airbag in any direction. Um, with uh, uh, these experiments, we did introduce to the literature the, the concept of the protection that can be provided by airbag restraints. Um, it turns out that as we went on to the airplane application of airbags, it was discovered by the patent uh, group of Martin that both Hetrick and Bertrand had proposed airbag uh, ideas uh, for the seated person. Uh, and uh, um, so Martin decided not to, to patent, attempt to patent any of our, our work. But here I am dropping in the, in the airbag uh, 
15 feet, and this was done at, at, at an angle as well as straight down. Uh, one twangs a, a certain amount in the airbag, but uh, uh, otherwise the distortion is minimized by the support. <coughs> Uh, Hetrick uh, got the first uh, United States patent on the airbag design. Um, his was an inflated pad system, and uh, Hetrick, therefore, has been called the father of the airbag. Um, Carl Clark, on the other hand, did the early labor of showing the potential of airbag uh, restraints, and so he has been called the mother of the airbag because of going through this labor to bring the idea from a concept to the preliminary uh, picture of uh, airbags now for uh, all kinds of vehicles. We developed a swing method and uh, examined the crashing uh, without uh, airbag restraints and then with airbag restraints and showed indeed in, in manned runs as well as these uh, that there was a significant protection uh, provided by the distribution of load by the airbag. <coughs> However, in the rebound, in that particular run, I hit the, the hard structure in the back of the seat, and so we went on and, and developed an inflated seat structure, which I called the air seat. And this still is needed. Uh, in high acceleration, the seat structures will, if it's an inflated structure with tension members within it, it will not. This is an experimental crash of a DC-7 uh, run by uh, NASA, but with our airbags and many other restraints on board. We were, the plane was supposed to stop uh, at the top of that first hill, but it had a tailwind coming down the track and went over the hill, and we all thought everything had been lost. Indeed, much of the instrumentation was lost, but uh, the uh, uh, motion pictures inside the cabin were uh, uh, retained. Watch this dummy particularly. The, you'll see the debris uh, as the wings are broken off uh, before it hits the first hill, but when it hits the hill, watch it go almost straight down. There's a, a rotational uh, motion that throws the dummy down into the seat and onto the floor. This dummy, in, in hitting the uh, uh, hill, um, breaks uh, the, the seat structure. And the backward-facing dummies even were, were uh, simply heavy, too heavy under the high G loads and broke the seats back. But here's the airbag. Now notice that this airbag is large. The present automobile airbags are 1.2 cubic feet or so. This uh, chest airbag was 15 cubic feet, and there were additional airbags under the seat and uh, in, in, the, in front for the knees. In going into the airbag, one simply deforms it a certain amount. You can see from that floating object that we're in the zero G phase of the, of the flight. <coughs> Here's the second bang, and again, you simply go down into the airbag and then come back. The uh, later system should not open up as, as much as this one did, but uh, uh, we did proceed to develop a, a design for airbags in airplanes, and here in 1991, I still feel that is a desirable uh, future, particularly if you use the air seat in addition which can actually make the total weight of the system less than uh, the present seat uh, and uh, uh, the present seat uh, systems. In spite of uh, being opened up this much, when the uh, plane finally hits the bottom of the valley and rolls over onto its left side, you'll see the dummy go forward and hit the airbag again. Here are some additional tests with the airbag, <coughs> and this includes the air seat, and you can see how the dummy can deform into that seat structure and move around and yet uh, uh, be supported. We did two uh, SNB tests, uh, not totally successful, but nonetheless, the concept of the airbag uh, was further developed. We uh, did some testing at the Atlantic uh, City uh, NAFIC uh, uh, catapult track, 
and again, uh, if you watch carefully, you'll, you'll see the uh, dummy go forward, compress the airbag, distort the air seat, uh, and yet uh, the two will stay sufficiently together that the uh, G-loading is well uh, supported against.